Hi guys, welcome to another video of Shatam Vyajas. Today we are doing the full review of S22 and S22 Plus. So I have been using the phones, you know, back and forth for around, I guess, uh, two months now, one, one and a half month to be precise. And uh, these are actually the phones that most of people should buy because uh, they tick all the boxes. They do almost everything very good with very less cons. The pricing is also... I can't say good, but it's okay compared to what the market is going currently and on the uh, pricing for all other flagship phones. So overall, they are decent product. So let's talk about the in-hand feel of the devices first. Uh, one thing that Samsung has changed from past S21 series is that they are more squarish design now. So it's more like an iPhone, you can say. So the sides are more squared out and it's a more boxy design now. Although compared to the S22 Ultra, the S22 Plus and S22 series still uh, feels a lot closer to an iPhone design and you know more squarish design language. So overall, the in-hand feel of the device is good. It gives you a premium feeling in hand as compared to last year, which, uh, you know, we got plastic at the back. This year we have glass on the back. So it can get, uh, you know, scratched easily or it can break easily, but it still feels very premium in hand. The volume buttons are clicky as usual. The fingerprint scanner I have noticed is best in class still under display fingerprint scanner. Samsung uses the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. So they are reliable, good and pretty fast. So you don't have to worry about the fingerprint scanner lagging behind. I would still have preferred the face ID on the phone because you know something closer to face ID replica or a face recognition system in short, not the camera based, the sensor based because it's easier and it's more effortless to you know interact with your phone and do all those day to day work. Now let's talk about the display. Uh, both phones feature 1080p AMOLED display. So these doesn't have LTPO display. They do have the variable refresher display that Samsung gives. So it goes from 120 hertz to 48 hertz. Although there was a rumor when the phone launched that you know they go from 1 hertz to 120 hertz, but this is not the case with the normal S22 Plus and the S22. The normal S22 Ultra has that feature where it goes to 1 Hz to 120 Hz. Uh, this variable refresh rate issue does not have a lot negative effect on the phone as such. But one thing I think you can notice is that, you know, uh, you will feel at times that battery life is lacking. And I think uh, LTPO display would have compensated for that. Although I think this is the only complaint I have about the display rest. It's a brilliant display. The S22 has 1300 nits of brightness and the S22 plus has 1700 nits of brightness. So overall, it's a very, very good display as it skates with Samsung displays. I think I have said it a million times in my videos that Samsung makes the best displays in the market and it still stays true for the same uh, phones. It's a very good display. Although when we are talking about displays, we will have to talk about the battery life because this year Samsung has reduced the battery life by 300 megahertz for both the phones. So the smaller one has 3700 milliamp hour battery and the bigger one has 4500 milliamp hour battery which is basically 300 mAh less than the uh, S21 model. I don't know why Samsung reduced the battery size but I think it has something to do with making the phones a little slimmer and lighter and you know that's why they had to reduce the battery to uh, fit the battery in the frame that Samsung has designed for this new model. Samsung announced the 45 watt super fast charging, which is, I don't think uh, super fast in exact terms when you compare it to something like OnePlus or Xiaomi, but it still can charge your phone in around one hour for at least the S22 Ultra. Mind you, the super fast charging is only supported by the S22 Plus series and not the normal S22. So it comes in S22 Plus and S22 Ultra. S22 doesn't have the support for super fast charging. One major drawback I think the battery where you will see is in performance because it, both the phones are running Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Don't get me wrong, these are very powerful chips and you know they perform very well. But the issue is that they run a little hot. It's like you know because they are powerful chips. They, pa they require power from the battery, they require raw power. So when you are pushing the phone, when you are playing games or when you are recording a 4K or 8K video, you will definitely feel that the battery life is getting shorter because the phone gets heated up. That's why this year you would have seen in almost every new phone launching with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 that they have a special section dedicated for cooling. So as the phone heats up, it will consume more battery and that will result in lesser battery life. So I think that's more on the side of uh, Snapdragon chip. I have not tested the Exynos one, so I have no idea how the Exynos ones perform as compared to Snapdragon, but I think Snapdragon is going to be a little better overall. 
So that's something we have to uh, look for in the phone that it will heat up eventually when you are using it. My one major gripe with these series, both phones and S22 Ultra 2 for that matter is that their vibration motor is not that good. Now I'll explain why is that issue. What happened with the S21 series is that it has a Z axis vibration motor. So it means that it can move up and down. So the vibration motor felt a lot stronger and you know you could feel that the vibration is very strong compared to uh, earlier phones and don't get me wrong the vibration motor still is very strong and uh, it is capable enough but the issue is that they have now shifted it to X axis. So let's say earlier when your phone's vibration motor used to vibrate up and down this time it vibrates X to Y so it's in the same direction it doesn't go up down. So the vibrations are not that prominent according to me even at 100% intensity. So that is something that you will notice despite the phones having a very good vibration mode. Both the phones have almost similar camera sensors. So uh, the main camera they use a 50 megapixel camera sensor which uses pixel binning to take 12 megapixel photos. And they have ultra wide uh, 10 megapixel sensor which has I think 110 degree uh, ultra wide angle and then they have 10 megapixel. 3x telephoto camera which is uh, I can't say that these are best in class cameras out there these are uh, you can say a notch down the flagship camera uh, Samsung has improved a lot in terms of camera performance and you can see that the Samsung you know the Samsung feel of the photos have toned down a lot so the photos are not that oversaturated they are you know Samsung is not doing that much processing the night photography with the cameras are very good. If you want me to make a detailed video about the camera performance of the S22 series, let me know in the comment below and I'll try, I'll try to make a whole dedicated video with comparing photos, you know, from the S22 series to the iPhone or for that matter, Pixel also, whatever you guys want. Coming about software, you know, if you asked me, I think four or five years back, what's your opinion on Samsung software? I used to say that it's trash. One UI was never great. It was filled with bloatware, lots of issues, lots of bugs, but now, Samsung has fixed it to a point where I think they are the best uh, software skin in the market. I'll justify that with my reasons that I believe Oxygen OS is a, in a mess right now. You don't know what's happening with OnePlus, whether they are going to stick with the Oxygen OS or they are going to add the color OS flavor to it. Like they have already added it, but for how long they will need to change it back to Oxygen OS as they have promised. I don't know about that. So, you know, I don't rely on future updates for a product. Right now, Oxygen OS is a mess. Uh, there are no stock Android phones other than that in the market. Uh, you can consider, let's say, Pixel. But issue with Pixel is that with time, the phone has gotten buggy. So a lot of small bugs that were not available on day one are present now. So the software experience, I think, has kind of gone back. And uh, then comes Samsung with One UI, which has better animations, more uh, crisper details on the screen, more better icon display, a lot less bloatware as compared to last time. So I think at this point, Samsung uh, One UI is the best software skin possible on an Android when you consider every factor. Like I still love the uh, stock Android feel of the Pixel, but it is a buggy. Uh, version of the OS so Google need to fix that but Samsung is doing pretty good job on that department performance with the software combined is you know the small nitty-gritty features that you get uh, like multi window multi uh, user support those things help a lot now let's talk about whether the phones are a value for money or not personally I love the S22 it's such a good phone it starts at around I think 65,000 rupees in that price, it is way better than iPhone 13 mini and you can see that the screen size is bigger and you get, you know, more uh, performance and more screen real estate for your money that you're paying for, let's say, getting iPhone 13 mini or iPhone 13 for that matter too. I love the form factor. The S22 is very good and very, uh, I can say it's a very cute phone in hand. It feels very good in hand and it's a very decent device too. The S22 Plus, on the other hand, is a little costlier. I think starts at around 85,000 rupees. But with discount, etc., you can easily get it uh, for, I think, 80,000 rupees easily. But uh, it's on the little uh, larger side, but still Samsung has reduced the screen size by one inch from 6.7 to 6.6 6 inch, which you won't feel a lot difference, but still it feels very good. And it, I can definitely say that it's a value for money phone. The only caveat is that you should not be someone who wants to use the phone heavily for just the camera purposes. Then there are other alternates in the market, like let's say the iPhone 13 Pro series or the iPhone 13, even the normal ones, or even the S22 Ultra phone for that matter. 
Other than that, these phones are a very good, uh, just flagship phones in the market available right now. So if you're looking for a good, decent Android phone, I don't think there is any better phone in this price range and in this segment at this moment. So thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, we will try to do more full reviews and, you know, uh, more detailed reviews about the product. So hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.